everybody, Brad QuantLabs.net. Wanted to talk to you about finally moving averages. Now, in case you haven't seen, I just put up two videos in the last few days. I'll just go to my channel here, Eat Quant Labs on YouTube channel, Quant Labs. So if you go into the video section, uh, there's two videos I've just talked about. One called Using Fibonacci Retracement Level for Price Target Moves for Support and Resistance. And another one just posted, uh, one called Testing Up and Down Trend Line for Support and Resistance Line. So now, the third indicator I'll be using, which all comes out of again, and I talked about it in the first video here, is Nick Trades. So this one comes from Nick Trades as well. I do like moving averages because they work real well. So I am going to start on the, this is a just a random uh, cryptocurrency pair I've downloaded. This is for you, as you can see, 365 uh, days. Crypto never closes, so it's actual trading days are included um, with weekends and holidays. So here's our first chart. These charts are courtesy of chart directors you can see here. Um, first thing first is we've got two other indicators which I don't use as much, the RSI and the momentum. Momentum I'm using more of because of um, the moving averages combined with uh, the uh, trend lines really help there to define trend at that point of when a price might hit one of the trend lines, the upper lower uh, when it goes into some kind of simple wedge or I've shown hopefully one of kind of like a, 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 cha a, cha a classic channel. And those two trend lines can really show some typical um, patterns including wedges. Uh, I've seen some flags very rarely, uh, some channel and uh, what's the other one I can see? That's pretty well it. So Momentum is very helpful to determine that. RSI obviously is to help uh, measure the condition if it's overbought or undersold. Um, and then we also have here the Bollinger, which I don't really use a lot at all. But what I want you to pay attention here is um, the moving averages I'm focusing on. Obviously, this video is on that. So you have a simple moving average 20, simple moving average 50, and an EMA, which is a slower one, at uh, 200. So here you can see that we have our um, candlesticks with our moves. As you can see here, now this is for the last 365 days. Along here you can see the um, volume. So I'm going to go into now the, uh, let's say the, the six month or the 180 days, or roughly around six months. And this one's a little easier, but it'll get easier as we move ahead. Here you can see RSI has hit... Um, way overbought um, in around here um, and some other points along here. The volume overall since January has pretty well died off as you can see next to no volume at all for this cryptocurrency pair. Um, you can see some big moves here in the bars themselves. So we show you that again in the 90 day. Wow, we're getting really breaking them all down. So here, nothing's changed, it's, just, it's easier to see things. So now, if you study the um, moving averages here, the moving averages here, at this period, are uh, here to um, roughly here, sorry, here, the, they, they diverge quite a bit. So there's a bit of breadth between the SMA and the S, SMA 20 and the SMA 50. And even more with the um, with the EMA 200, but here's where it gets really funky. See how here along this period, the um, moving averages start to tighten. That basically now moves verifies this is why I like moving averages that something's going on with those two averages are the the are starting to narrow, which means there's there's now less trends and less movements as you can see here. So. Um, let me let me show you on the 30-day chart. So, as I said here, since about this point, you can see there was some good volume. You've got a good bar here, and the volume on the long run has really 
uh, slowed down as well as you can see the RSI has really dropped off as well as the momentum so everything's working in tangent but here's where the funky th stuff comes along so on the 30 day you'll notice here that virtually there is no movements between these moving averages whatsoever and then here we have our um, EMA, if I'm, I'm not mistaken here, but our EMA here is getting tighter as well. And that's a 200-day moving average. So the 50 and the 20 really tighten up, and this is where the trend is really helpful to figure out what's going on. Um, but as I said, what really depicts something with a breakdown on the price is just is dropping off as I can confirm the RSI is dropping off as well as the momentum is pretty well in the toilet and you can also notice that we finally have dates on this particular chart so this moving average is very helpful especially when you get in these tight constraints that we've had over the last um, few weeks in June when virtually I mean right along here it's just there's very little divergence between the moving averages I mean you can't even see uh, the difference if I can pull up my um, my uh, 90 day so back here in June you can see uh, things just started to go really crazy as it's starting to really tighten up but um, yeah things started to break down over the last few um, weeks and that the moving averages confirm that so that's why I like using moving averages. Now, when you factor in these type of trends, when the moving averages diverge, we got trend and we can trade it really well, um, but uh, we will run into problems in trying to find trend when, uh, as I said, the, these, these moving averages, the SMA 20 and 50 really tighten up. So this particular pair is not obviously a good example um, but uh, in the in the 90 day or sorry I think even in the one year might be or even the six month let's say you can see that there's quite a bit of divergence between all the averages but as soon as it crosses here we're, we're, we're we got problems so there's that and uh, there's something else I wanted to mention but I'm hoping my fog memory does not forget Oh yes, let's go back to the 30 day. Okay, so the next steps. This is very helpful. So right now, as I said, we're entering into a period where there's been no movement on this particular cryptocurrency pair, as you can tell, because the moving averages have tightened up. But here's the thing, is that we've got this massive bar move up, and also you can see the spike in the in the candlestick wicks here but here's the funky stuff we have a line that we can use I can't remember the name of it Mariposa Mariposa who knows but once the next day the uh, this drops uh, it's safe to say that uh, if that candlestick drops more than 50% chances are we have uh, potential market reversal on our hands on top of the following few days uh, the trend or, or, or the formation of these candlesticks may turn into something called Adam and Eve pattern and it's just another way to verify that a market reversal may be taking place and what we would also be looking for as these uh, candlesticks start to take uh, take hold doing their up and down thing we're going to be looking for the averages um, to hopefully diverge a little bit and and open up um, so it's one way to verify the market turn if we start um, getting our candlesticks more positive more green on top of that we can also use the trend lines that I'm trying to use um, as you'll watch and if you ever watch that video I just put up where you can see some classic trends moving up as well or classic trend moving down or if it's going into some form of a wedge and I'm referring to this video again trending up and down trend line for support and resistant line so watch that to really 
hopefully um, understand that formation if we ever have a, mar a market reversal on hand. So I'll be coding that up uh, in the next day or so, put up a video on that. And that's pretty well it for all the Nick Trade stuff. Because um, I will tell you from my experience, this right here is the hardest type of trading there is on the planet. Even if you're just doing end of day, uh, I couldn't imagine that uh, intraday is much better because you're getting small moves. And to me, it's just too noisy. That's why I like the end of day tra uh, charts or daily charts. And um, I think once I can verify that this Adam and Eve pattern may work, then we may have uh, something pretty well all, uh, all scenarios covered off. And then I can proceed moving on to the other areas that I want to move into. That is already pretty well coded up. So there you go. I just want to share this simple moving average one um, and how it can work and how it can help you out with some tips. And uh, again, we shall talk to you later. Have a good day.